Russ Parr. I am a film director, writer, producer, radio personality. Well, I've been in radio close to 30 years and uh, film about 15. Well, you know, actually, I'm, I'm actually degreed in radio, television, and film, um, even though uh, I didn't do anything with the film deg uh, degree when I got out of college because, you know, radio was, uh, was feeding my family, so it was easier to do that. Um, but I still have a passion for film. I used to be a little lightweight recording artist, so I kind of, you know, directed my own uh, videos, a couple of them. And, um, and you just kind of, you get the bug there, you know. It's just like, okay, this is something I've been trained to do. Why don't I do it, you know. So I wrote a script, and no one wanted it because I, I was under the impression that somebody had to buy it. So it sat there for about 10 years. And a friend of mine read it as I was getting ready to throw it away and said, you need to do something with this. So I went out and got a couple of investors and shot my first movie, uh, the, uh, the Last Stand is what it was called. Uh, this is my second film here. My first, very first film uh, premiered here at ABFF um, back in 2006, I believe. And um, I, I, the ABFF is important because, you know, it, it gives, uh, you know, independent filmmakers that are not going to get the opportunity to have a vast audience. We let our peers see our work, let other people see our work and give us an opportunity that, you know, you're not going to get, you know, by just trying to knock down doors at some of the major distributors. Uh, I think this, this is one of the doors that it helps open people's eyes to get a look at you, look at you and see what, you, what you're able to accomplish with very little because a lot of these folks in here have made films for little or nothing. And, and it just, it's so wonderful to see the, expression, the expressionism and, and seeing people to take little and tell a beautiful story. There are more stories than what we are seeing on the big screen. And I think ABFF allows that voice to be heard. Uh, my movie, The Under Shepherd. Uh, the biggest challenge is getting, um, well, I've had a number with this. Uh, you know, I, I pretty much finance a lot of my own films. Um, I had a partner with this one because I needed a little bigger budget because I wanted to go after a few bigger names. But I think that the, the big challenge, especially with the content of the film that I have, The Under Shepherd, um, it, it, a lot of people shied away from it. They're kind of scared to mess with the church because that is sacred with black folk. And, uh, you know, I had a number of people say, well, the movie doesn't look big enough, or did you, you see that one Ice Cube church movie got boycotted in the South, and I don't want to get into that, you know, and, and I understand that. I knew that going in, that this wasn't um, a film, the subject matter was going to be difficult to digest from people that are not going, walking the right walk, you know, with the Lord. So, uh, that's what I anticipated and, and it has come to fruition because having a tough time with what I consider a very good film. Uh, I think the, the message is, is don't stop at the first person's no because a lot of people will stop. You, you run into somebody that's credible in the business and they say no and you're going like, oh, it must not be any good. And that's crazy because there's always somebody else that can see something else in your work. And, you know, just because somebody else has done big things, you know, in the business, they are not the end all, you know. And I've seen so many people just bail out because uh, this big name uh, director said it, my work sucked. I'm like, hey man, you know, you'd be surprised. You know, there's somebody else out there that may appreciate what you're doing. Robert Townsend was one of the ones that, you know, uh, I saw what he did with Hollywood Shuffle where he just like, man, I'm going to make my own movie and I don't need Hollywood to do it for me, you know, and did the credit card thing. And that made me go like, you know, I need to write a script. You know, I, I didn't know that I could write, you know, I still don't know that I can write, um, but, you know, it just comes kind of natural and it's just very relaxing because I don't sit down for, you know, four months to write a script, you know. I don't know bang out a script in 15 days because I'm a spontaneous person. I mean, that's how I am on the radio. I do improv and I think sometimes your first thoughts are your best thoughts. People overthink stuff and, and they water down their, their creative genius. I don't feel a total responsibility to tell our story. I, I can tell our story from my perspective, but I just want everybody to understand we all have different points of view 
and and that and that should be celebrated. We all thought, thought alike and, and made the same movies over and over again, which we have a tendency to do. It will become very mundane and boring. So I, I really feel that it's so important to to you know tell your story as it pertains to you. In this movie, The Under Shepherd, I, I gave my perspective of the church and the problems I've had with it. Not everybody's had that same experience, but I think Hollywood gets locked into a formula and they want to stick with it. Stick with it until it just doesn't work anymore. In the meantime, there's so much, so much great material that never sees the light of day. Well, The Under Shepherd, I'm having a tough time finding a buyer, believe it or not. I were up for like five awards at the ABFF and you know, they could appreciate it, but you know, I think it doesn't fit the mold right now. Uh, our audience, and you know, and it's not even a racial thing. People go, oh, you know, the white folks in Hollywood don't want your stuff. No, it's supply and demand. Black folks are only watching, they like to see comedies. That's what sells, and that's what they want. When I come along with the drama, it's a tough, it's a tough call. You know, and, and you know, I've seen so many people that have great, you know, dramatic pieces that it's gonna turn out to be just a wonderful home video for them. And that's, that might happen with The Under Shepherd. You know, I, it's, it's unfortunate, but I feel that so much crap is going on with the church and some churches, that I felt it's time, you know, to do that movie. And, you know, I found somebody was willing to take the risk with me. Unfortunately, it could be a losing venture for us, but, I did something that I felt necessary to do. Absolutely, absolutely. I, th there are so many things I didn't touch on in this film that I could have, because I backed off on a few things. Um, now in hindsight, knowing what I'm getting back, you know, some of the pushback that I'm getting from some pastors, it just makes me want to like, I, I should have put it all out there, because I shot it, it's just on the floor. You know, but I, you know, I, I didn't sugarcoat it. But there were some things that I, where I could have went, but I didn't. Because I wanted it to be entertaining, and I didn't really want it to anger people that much. You know, if I could sell this one, it, it's perfect for a sequel. I mean, most of my stuff that, you know, the 35 and Ticking, which is on BET, um, something like a business, was a straight spoof film. Believe it or not, I mean, it, it's a movie that has no plot, you know, no redeeming qualities. It's just crazy, stupid, sophomoric stuff has outsold anything that I've ever made dramatic. And that's a statement. And, and it, it's unfortunate, you know. People go, oh, that's the worst movie you ever made. I said, it's the most profitable one. Well, not necessarily profitable, I'm not really in profit on it, but it's sold more than everybody else, you know. And, and, it, and that's crazy. That just tells you the mindset of the viewing audience. We have a casting director that we have an agreement, she just takes care of all the little peripheral parts. But, you know, I had, you know, People like Chris Spencer and, and uh, Brett Dismuke from Image, uh, these are friends that know people. And they can get to one or two people. And you get those people the script and they go, oh my goodness, this is kind of good. And then they'll attach. Once they attach, everybody else just falls like dominoes. So it, it, it's a different, you know, you, you don't, I haven't used like a big name um, uh, casting director because a lot of times, uh, if you approach, you approach uh, you know, their agency, you'll never get to them, ever. So what you try to do is you try to get to them personally and say, say yes or no. That's all you can say is no or yes. So it's a good look. I, I, I think the big thing for me is that it's been a struggle. It's, you know, it's, this, this business is hard to make money in. And I've had to adapt. Uh, I was listening to Will Packer the other day, and he says, you have to compromise. And I used to have an issue with that. You know, I'm not difficult by any means, you know, but when you, you write something and it's your baby, it's really tough for non-creative people, like the money person that's investing, to come in and say, oh, you need to change that. It'd be better if we had like a strong person here. And it's, it's like, oh my gosh, you're at the banker. You know, or, or, you're, it's a catch-22 because you need their money and they fashion themselves as writers and directors and everything else and you have to learn to compromise and I think that's one of the things that you know I mean, my wife tells me oh you gotta compromise because uh, you know sometimes I push back when I write a script and have her read it and she'll disagree with something and I'm like well no here's the reason why I did it and then I catch myself and go like well why'd you have her read it she's gonna criticize it and she keeps it real she's not gonna lie to me 
Um, so I, I think the big thing is to, to be able to compromise and adapt and learn to play the game. And remember, it's a very small business. You burn a bridge with one person, it can come back to haunt you five years from now. I'm in Miami at the ABFF. Uh, my movie, The Under Shepherd, is up for best narrative, best uh, uh, picture, best director, best actor, best everything. If I get one award, just being nominated is just a, a blessing. So if I get one, great. You know, so one out of four would be great.